a very, very happy morning, everybody. Good morning. morning. Good to see everybody this morning. Today we will be talking about A chance leading to trust. Now, thank you, Brother Alex, for the scripture reading. Let me just read to you, uh, again, Luke chapter 5. Let's go to Luke chapter 5. And let's start up with verse 1. Um, and um, we will go until verse um, 5. Luke chapter 1, uh, chapter 5, 1 to 5. Then he sat down. And taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. And uh, Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and we haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. Now in verse 1, one day as Jesus was standing by the lake, of Genesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the uh, water's edge two boats left there, uh, left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. And he got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. So we see here the story of an encounter with uh, Jesus Christ and Peter and the team while uh, they were on the shore. After uh, they've been out, uh, out in the sea catching fish, but uh, they have not caught anything. And then uh, Jesus was in that certain area as well, and he was preaching. And then, uh, then he saw uh, the boat and Simon and got into one of the boats. And then he said that uh, to, to Simon to put out in the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Now, um, there was a bit of hesitation from, from the part of Peter when Jesus Christ asked him to, to go out again and uh, cast their nets because they've worked all night and they have not caught anything but uh, and they didn't have any success and they were probably tired tired and uh, probably hungry and just want to make uh, uh, take that much needed rest uh, for the whole night they've been out and another reason maybe uh, why he was hesitant for a while uh, to go out and uh, cast their net was because Jesus was a carpenter's son and uh, probably Peter was thinking to himself that I know better than this person because he is he was a seasoned fisherman right? and, and this, this guy here is a guy that's uh, a, uh, a carpenter's son and he knew better right? so Peter knew better so there was, again, a hesitation. And uh, though there was never mentioned that uh, Jesus being a fisherman, and we know that uh, he was a carpenter's son, and uh, we know that Peter was a seasoned fisherman, and he knew, he knew what's the best time to sail out and where to cast their net and to get fish. And normally, uh, our, our city back home, we, we live... Uh, just like in the setting, we are near the, the shoreline or near the sea, and uh, one of the uh, source of living in our city is fishing. So normally, fishermen they go out at night. They fish at night. They cast their net at night. So Peter knew better than Jesus Christ. So that's why there's a bit of hesitation. You know? And uh, here's the question: Why then? Uh, did Peter listen to Jesus and still sail out to sea, though he was an expert? 
Okay? Why did he follow Jesus Christ, knowing to himself that he is more of an expert than Jesus Christ? And this morning, I want to talk to you about that. I want to talk to you about two things. Number one is I want to talk to you about taking the chance or uh, taking your chance. Okay? I have dealt with many individuals um, who were terminally ill when uh, conventional medicines could not help them anymore. And doctors, they just gave, uh, uh, they just gave them the, the sad news that they have, uh, they have this time to live and that uh, they, they cannot do any more for them. Now these people, now you know how they will do everything. If you are in this situation, you know, you have the feeling that you will do everything just to get rid of this sickness, this ailment, this illness that you have. And that uh, just to make yourselves better, you know, you will do everything. Um, have you watched the movie Lorenzo's Oil way back in the early 90s? Lorenzo's Oil. Okay. Um, Lorenzo, he was, uh, he, have you? Okay. Uh, he was a five-year-old kid, Lorenzo. And uh, he was diagnosed with an incurable genetic disease called ALD. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not pretty sure what that really means, but it, it was called ALD. And it was told that uh, he will only last for three years. So he was five years old. This was a true story. Five-year-old kid, Lorenzo, uh, he, he was told by the doctors that he, he only had three years to live. But he lived uh, for 30 years. Right? So he died the day after his 30th birthday. And uh, having lived 22 more years longer than the doctor's prediction. Now in the story, his father and his mother uh, tried so many things. They tried holistic approach and they tried unconventional approach. Uh, thus, they created what, what was called Lorenzo's oil to cure their, their child ALD. Now, uh, as they uh, progress in uh, making the Lorenzo's oil, they were successful. And in the process, they saved their son and he lived 30 years. You know, when your back is against the wall, and when you have nothing more to lose, okay, because you are already in the worst case scenario, you would listen to, to you will listen to people. You know, you, you will take their advice and try things that you've never tried before because you, you wanted to, to be better, right? That uh, just maybe you will become more uh, you will become better, and just maybe uh, you will be healed. And people will jump on to those things, you know, those holistic approach, those unconventional approach, hoping for a certain miracle, you know, right? And Peter probably thought to himself, hey, it won't hurt much anymore if I would listen to a carpenter's son and go out just one more time, and cast the net. It won't. He probably he told the team, you know, what's there to lose, right? What is there to, to lose anymore? Just, we'll, we'll try it, okay? So, uh, they went out. Okay? They, they hid the, the call of Jesus Christ to sail out and to, to cast out their, their net. And, uh, Peter, at that time, he was not yet an apostle. He was not yet an apostle. He just heard about Jesus Christ and uh, what Jesus Christ claims to be. So he never really, uh, he never really had a, any great deal of thought about who Jesus Christ at that time. So he just, he just took a chance. He just took a chance on Jesus Christ. Just maybe, just maybe, Jesus Christ is what he claims to be, the Son of God, okay, making miracles, right? So, as they say, it is better to have the oops 
than the what if. Right? So, the lesson is uh, that when all things fail, when all things fail, take a chance on Jesus Christ. What is there to lose? Right? Take a chance on Jesus Christ. They, they often refer this to take the leap of faith, as they say. Take that leap of faith with Jesus Christ. You know, try Jesus Christ. You've tried everything. Right? You've done everything. And still you are a failure. So why not at this time try Jesus Christ? Right? Take a chance on Jesus Christ. Now one, one similar instance in the Bible was uh, the story of this woman. He was bleeding for, for 12 years in Mark chapter 5. Let's go and read Mark chapter 5, 25 to 28. And the woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet, instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. Because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. You see, she just took a chance at Jesus Christ. She really never knew really Jesus, who Jesus Christ is. But she heard about Jesus Christ. Hey, what's there to lose? She's been bleeding for 12 years and it's getting worse. So she, she thought to herself, I will go into the crowd and just maybe if I could touch his clock, I will be healed. And she did. She took a chance and guess what? She was healed. Another story, Rahab. Rahab the harlot, the prostitute, he, she took a chance with God when she, when she hid these two spies, right? All Rahab knew of God was the story she heard about what God did. In Joshua chapter 2, 10, 11, we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you come, came out of Egypt and what you did to Sihon and Og, the two kings of the Amorites east of the Jordan, whom you completely destroyed. When we heard of it, our hearts melted in for years and everyone uh, in fear and everyone's courage failed because of you. For the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on the earth below. So Rahab just heard of this story of, God, of what God did. But she took a chance on God. She hid the two spies. And uh, in, in Matthew chapter 7, when Jesus talked about entering the narrow gate, Matthew 7, 13 and 14, entering the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. You see, oftentimes people thought that the wide gate, the wide road is the fastest way to their destination. So they take that route. Okay. Not knowing that almost everybody was thinking the same thing. So everybody were going the same route. They're all taking the wide road. So when you, when you arrive at that wide road, lo and behold, it's full of traffic. Because everybody is going, they're going the same route. Because everybody thought that it's the fastest way because it's wide. See? It's congested, and probably there's a uh, accident, the, possibil the possibility of an accident in that road, so it's traffic. But sometimes the inner streets, the sideways, are much faster and much safer because of the fewer cars traversing those streets. Now, Jesus is telling us is to take a chance, to take a chance with him. You take a chance to go to the inner streets. You know, and guess what? When you listen to God and take that chance with Him, when you take that leap of faith, so to speak, you'll get there faster, you'll get there safer, and you will be rewarded. You will be rewarded. Now look what happened to Peter and the team when they listened to Jesus Christ. Let's go again to Luke chapter 5, verses 6 and 7. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. 
they were rewarded. Okay. Now in Mark chapter 5, verse 29, immediately regarding the, the, uh, the, the woman, immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. See, In the case of Rahab, what happened to her? Okay. Then they burned the whole city and everything in it, but they put the silver and gold and the articles of bronze and iron into the treasury of the Lord's house. But Joshua, you see, when they went into the place of Rahab, Joshua and everybody, they destroyed the city. In verse 25, but Joshua spared Rahab the prostitute with her family and all, and all who belonged to her. Because Rahab took a chance with God and she was rewarded for it. Now, this and many other people in the, in the Old and the New Testament, okay, many others like them in their lifetime and in our time today, got rewarded for taking a chance with God. You know, you don't have to know everything about Jesus Christ. You don't, know, you don't need to know about everything you know, about the Bible be, before you, 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 you come to Jesus Christ. Okay? You don't need to know every detail of Jesus Christ before you take a chance on him. This morning we were discussing about the, the eunuch. Okay? He just learned upon fully about Jesus Christ when Philip came up to him and he was he accepted the Lord and he was baptized. You know, and many other instances in the Bible, the and many Bible characters, they they didn't really <clears throat> knew Jesus Christ full well, fully well, but they accepted the Lord. Jesus Christ. Those things that they knew about Jesus Christ, it was sufficient for them to believe, have faith in God, and accept the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, when 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 people say, "Oh, you know, brother or sister, let me let me think about Jesus Christ. Let me let me think about it." You know, big percentage who said that they will think about it, they won't actually think about it. <laughs> yeah, they won't actually think about it. You know, the problem is, it is taking people forever to think about Jesus Christ. See, it's taking people forever to accept Jesus Christ. But, you know, we are so lucky. We have known Jesus Christ since our childhood. Right? In schools, Jesus Christ was being preached, was being taught. Way back in our city, in our, in our country, we have what we call GMRC. Good manners and right conduct. We were taught about living a godly life. We have known Jesus Christ uh, since we were kids. So all of us have known Jesus Christ since we were kids. But it's taking us forever to accept Jesus Christ for who he is. He is the son of God. And he is our salvation. And people said, let me think about it. But again, the chances are a big percentage, they won't really take a chance and they will not think about Jesus Christ. Now, uh, let me share one more story who, who, who took the chance with Jesus Christ to make a clear point. In Luke chapter 19, the story about Zacchaeus. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a cheap tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was. But because he was short and could not see over the crowd, so he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. Now, I want you to notice the word crowd okay, in, in, in red letters. When Jesus entered Jericho, there was a crowd. It means that the people have heard about Jesus Christ. Okay, they have heard about Jesus Christ and they wanted to see him in person. Jesus Christ was becoming popular at the time. And this was not just a small crowd. Because if this was just a small crowd gathering, Zacchaeus could have go to the other end of the line. Or he could have, he could have squeezed himself between two people. But this was a, a huge crowd that he could not get in even between two people because there were, there were rows and columns of people. And they were following Jesus Christ. And because he was small, so what he did, he climbed a, a sycamore tree. Now second, now just like the crowd, Zacchaeus was also curious. 
and wanted to see who this Jesus was in person. Okay? Now, he heard about Jesus, but he had not seen Jesus Christ. So his curiosity took the best of him. So he went out and climbed the sycamore tree. And what happened next? But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and save the lost. Point number one. Zacchaeus did not fully know Jesus Christ. No, he just heard of him. Point two, he took a chance on Jesus Christ. He went to a sycamore tree to see Jesus Christ. Now point three, he was rewarded for it when he took the chance. Jesus Christ dined in with him, came into his house, and, he, and Jesus Christ said those words. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. And Jesus said, today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. Wow. You see, what a wonderful experience that Zacchaeus had with Jesus Christ. You know, I, I, I envy Zacchaeus, to be honest. I envy him. He saw Jesus Christ in person and he was with Jesus Christ in his house. Wow. If I could have somebody in my house, dining in my house with me, I would love it to be Jesus Christ. And probably I will ask Jesus Christ, can you say, today salvation has come to this house? Right? So Zacchaeus, he took a chance and he was rewarded. And all the information he heard about Jesus, no, whatever that was, it was enough for Zacchaeus to take that leap of faith, so to speak, in Jesus Christ. Now, comparing our generation, again, to that of Zacchaeus, we have learned about Jesus Christ ever since we were kids. But Zacchaeus, no. He, was, he never heard about Jesus Christ. He just heard about Jesus Christ when Jesus Christ was preaching. And he heard about Jesus Christ and, and, and knew nothing more about him. And, so, and, he, and he took the chance in Jesus Christ. And he got rewarded you know unfortunately for many of us when life's curtain is beginning to fall and close on us we cry for mercy we cry for grace to god hoping that our plea and our so-called and those so-called you know sinners prayer could save us but unfortunately it's not so the, the, the gospel is clear. Jesus Christ is very clear on how can we attain salvation. You know? And my dear brethren and friends, okay, praying the sinner's prayer and just hoping when we are in our deathbed, when we cry out to God, hoping that the Lord will, will hear us, that is not taking chance with Jesus Christ. That is not about taking the leap of faith. You've already missed the chance with him. And when, when, you, when you had the chance, see, people are so accustomed to doing, trying to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ when they are, when they hit rock bottom, when they are in their so-called deathbed. That's where we always cry to God for mercy and grace. But when we had the chance, when we are all strong, when we, had, when, we had, when we still have our strength with us, we never call upon the name of the Lord. But only at that time when the curtain is beginning to fall on us. Now, the Bible is clear that while it is, while it is said today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. We have heard of the word of the Lord way, way back. But still, why are our hearts are still in rebellion? 
And 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, For he says, In an acceptable time I have heard you, and the day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now, now, not later, not tomorrow, for later and tomorrow may not come. That is why Apostle Paul said, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. You, when you put those two together, Jesus is clearly saying, when you, you heard of my word, when you heard of me, accept me. Take a chance with me. Go out. Cast out your nets. And you will find many catch. And Jesus said, now, not later, not tomorrow. When Jesus said to Peter and the team, sail out now. And they went. They did not wait till, till night time. No. They listened to Jesus now and they went now. And they cast their nets now. And see what happened. They have a big catch. They had a big catch. So after the big catch of Peter and the team, Jesus called him to be fishers of men. He became now the, an apostle. Now, can I have any volunteer? Any volunteer? Just one. Can I have any volunteer? Volunteer? Okay, Brother Ryan. Come on. Yes, sir. Come up here. All right. Can you join me up here? Okay. Um, so that they can see you. Okay, can you face the congregation? All right, so that they can see how handsome you are. And let me just put a, a few water. Okay. Now, and let me shake this. Okay. Do you trust me? <laughs> well. <laughs> okay. Now, I want you to hold this. Okay. And then put it up to your head. Put it onto your head. Okay. And I want you to turn around just one time. Okay, one time. Okay, then face them again. Okay, now hold the cup here in front of you. Okay, and then when I count to three, you pour the, the cup to your head. All right? Do you understand me? Huh? Well, we will, we will find in and see if the water will mess up your hair. Are you, are you good? Okay. Okay? All right. Now, just slowly. Okay. okay. One, two, three. Just slowly. One, two, three. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. I, I didn't mess your hair, right? No. Yeah. Just a couple of drip, right? Yeah. Just a couple. Yeah. But... <laughs> Are, are, you, are you not uh, wondering why there's just a, a few drops of water fell onto your head? Huh? Are you not wondering why just a few drops of water fell onto your head while I put a many? Huh? Because actually... Well, the, 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 the lesson is trust, right? Well, this is actually a gimmick cup that I made. Remember, I told you before, I, am a, uh, I wanted to be a magician. <laughs> this is a gimmick cup. Okay. This is a gimmick cup. And there's actually... 
Well, there's another cup inside that I cut, and there's a hole in it. And in that hole, there's actually cotton. So much of the water absorbed the cotton. The, uh, the water that spilled onto your, to your hair was actually uh, didn't go in. So there's just a couple. But you're good. Your, your hair is intact. <laughs> now, the second lesson I want to talk to you about very quickly is about the word trust. See? Trust is weightier. Trust is deeper than taking chances. With trust, you already develop a deeper connection, a relationship with the person. Okay. Now, from the moment Peter's encounter with Jesus, that started a beautiful and wonderful relationship with Jesus Christ. You see, Peter, he fell on. He fell at Jesus' knees, and Jesus made him one of the 12 apostles. In the process, our so-called leap of faith with Jesus now, Jesus want this chance with him to become trust. That's why our lesson is chance that becomes trust. He wants a lasting relationship that's built on trust, not just a one-time deal. Because taking a chance is just a one-time deal. You have doubts. You have doubts. But when you trust someone, all those doubts are, are, are gone. And it is not a one-time deal. It is not temporary in nature, but it is a lifelong commitment. But what is trust? People talk about it all the time. Okay? What does trust look like in the Bible? And when we talk of trust, one of the most popular verses is Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. But how do you trust in the Lord? What is the dynamics of trust? See, now, the Webster's Dictionary defined trust is a firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone of, or something. One thing that stands out to me in this definition is that you develop a firm belief in someone over time. Okay? It is not just you met a person today and you trust them. No. This definition talks about an overtime process, building a confidence, a trust in that person. Now, in this trust, it talks about also about the other person. What is in the other person? And he talks about there is his reliability, there is truth in that person, and there is the ability of that person. You see, you learn the person over the course of time, and you build a great deal of confidence in that someone. And probably the reason why uh, Brother Ryan trusted me because I built a relationship with him over time, so that's why he trusted me. Okay. Now, let us see how the Bible defines trust and the dynamic of trust. In the, the Old Testament, the word trust, trust in the Lord, in Proverbs chapter 3, it is called bautak in Hebrew. Now, it means bold, confidence, reliance, secure, you know, those things, trust, right? Now, I see the word bold, confidence, reliance, secure, trust, and uh, bold means fearless, not hesitating. Confidence means putting your reliance to someone. Okay? And all of these words somehow are very closely related in their meaning. Now, these words suggest how the dictionary defines trust, right? Then, I look, in, I look deeper, and I see the words careless, complacent. Now, my question is, how did these two words connect with trust? Can you imagine the word careless, complacent, being attached to the word trust? Then I see the phrase, to throw one down upon his face, lie extended on the ground. So those are part of the meaning of the word trust. So how are they related to bold, confidence, reliance, secure trust? Okay. Now I want us to see 
the meaning of careless, it means not giving sufficient attention or thought to avoiding harm or errors. Complacent, it means marked by self-satisfaction, especially when accompanied by an awareness of actual dangers or deficiencies. Now, have you noticed the similarity between the two? Notice those in the red letters. Not giving sufficient attention or thought. Self-satisfaction accompanied by an awareness. The thought or the idea of these two words is simply this word. I don't care. I don't care. Now, let me just qualify the I don't care part. Not that I really don't care about the result, but purposely not paying much attention or thought, or just being complacent. It simply really means that I am content and satisfied with my current situation now. Now, the next question in mind is, not giving sufficient attention or thought or self-satisfaction accompanied by awareness, an awareness to what? An awareness to what? Not giving too much thought on what? And it says in the red letter, not paying attention on harm, errors, an awareness to actual dangers and deficiencies. Now, both of them talks about the outcome that is unfavorable. Correct? So being complacent and being careless means that you are not thinking of the outcome. You don't care about the outcome. Now, by putting all those things together, by being careless and by being complacent, it means since I don't pay too much attention to whatever unfortunate would come, I am fine with it. Now, connect that to the word trust. How is the word careless and complacent connects to the word trust? Now, I want you to, to think. I want you to think. Uh, at what stage is a person uh, in his life that the person is truly careless? At what stage in the person's life that he is truly careless? A baby? Yes. When a person is just a baby, totally careless. And that's what trust means. And that's, what, that's where Bautak puts the word careless and complacent. Just like a baby, not a care in the world. Just putting his or her arms around the parents. Just trusting the parents for his sustenance, for his life. And that's what the word trust means. And that's what the word to throw yourself means. Trust is heavier, weightier, and far more deeper in meaning than taking chances in the Lord. When you have this relationship with God, God wants you to trust in Him. He wants you to throw yourself at Him like a servant to a master, like a baby totally dependent upon the parents. And that's what trust means. When you trust in the Lord, you don't care of the outcome. That's why it is called careless and complacent. Because you know that you are in the best of hands. Because you are with God. Amen? Amen. Amen. You are with God. See? Isaiah said, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and song, and He has become my salvation. Isaiah was not afraid of whatever outcome in his life as he journeyed with God because he knows that he is with God and that God is his salvation. He's never afraid. And that is what trust means. No matter what happens, you are not afraid. I am not afraid. Not a care in the world because I know God is with me. God is with you no matter what. If you look into the Hebrews chapter 11, Noah, when one about things not yet seen by faith, Abraham called to the place he would later receive as his inheritance obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as inheritance obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going, even though you don't know what will be the outcome of your life, you will trust in God because you know that God is with you. Because God is your salvation. 
Amen. And that is trust. No doubt whatsoever because you trusted the Lord. These people trusted the Lord. Now, Abraham, when he was asked to offer his son, Isaac, he was probably thinking, is God, am I hearing right when God said, sacrifice my son? But he trusted the Lord. He went on and would sacrifice his son. See, that is trust. Even though it seems to us, it is, it is unclear to us. Even though it doesn't make any sense at all. Even though when it seems not right, not just. But remember, when you put your trust in God, God will make everything all right. Because He makes sense, He is just, and He is fair. Now let me share you this acronym that I made for my definition of the word trust. Trust, it is throwing your resolve under the Savior's tending. Throwing everything that you have. Throwing your life to God. Throwing yourself to Jesus Christ because you know that He knows what's the best for you. And finally, let me read to you Psalm chapter 34. Beginning verse 1. And I want you to read Psalm 34 when you have the time in your home. Psalm 34. I will praise the Lord no matter what happens. I will constantly speak of His glories and grace. I will boast of all His kindness to me. Let all who are discouraged take heart. Let us praise the Lord together and exalt His name. For I cried to him and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. Others too were radiant at what he did for them. This poor man cried to the Lord and the Lord heard and saved him. For the angel of the Lord guards and rescues all who reverence him. Oh, put God to the test and see how kind he is. See for yourself the way his mercy showered down on all who trust in him. Reverence him for everyone who does this has everything he needs. Even strong young lions sometimes go hungry, but those of us who reverence the Lord will never lack anything good. Sons and daughters, come and listen, and let me teach you the importance of trusting and fearing the Lord. My dear brethren and friends, amid severe trials and challenges in our lives, this, I hope this lesson will encourage us to draw joy and contentment from the abundance of God's mercy, grace, and love. With our trust, fasten upon Him and with Him. Let me call now all those who have not accepted the Lord. Come forward. Enjoy the wonderful relationship with God. Give your full trust to the Lord because where can we go but to the Lord? Shall we all stand as we sing the song of invitation?